Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me start by saying, Mr. Park, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea that appraiser qualification requirements can create unnecessary barriers to entry and have the effect of protecting the existing guild, and I'm, I'm open to a conversation about how we make it uh, more accessible to more people. I am concerned that while there's no question there are a number of terrible anecdotes of racial bias in appraisals, it's not clear to me that there's enough actual substantive data to come to the conclusion that we have systemic racism in the uh, appraisal process. Um, the PAVE task force acknowledges in its report that, quote, valuation bias is difficult to assess, end quote. The report also recommends establishing metrics to identify bias. It does seem strange to suggest widespread or systemic disparities when the government hasn't yet measured or studied the scope of the problem or maybe even decide what metrics would indicate that there's a systemic problem. The report does, however, reference and base its recommendations primarily on two preliminary studies by Fannie and Freddie, which, by the way, in some important respects, come to contradictory conclusions. So I want to ask a little bit about the research upon which the PAVE report seems to heavily rely. Ms. Taylor, um, first of all, I'm sure you'd acknowledge GSEs are primarily in the business of buying mortgages and selling mortgage-backed securities and not primarily academics, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did the task force look at independent academic research that reached different conclusions than GSE, than the two GSE studies? Thank you for that question, and yes, we did. Um, there were a number of studies that we evaluated, uh, and I'd just like to reiterate the um, FHFA study that evaluated millions of appraisals and the freeform text data that was used there. Um, and we saw in that particular study where appraisers documented the um, context of a neighborhood. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. These are anecdotes, though. And it looks like most of the conclusions and most of the references in the report refer back to these two studies. Let me ask you this. Um, the data that the GSEs relied on for their studies, is, is that publicly available data? I don't think it is. It is not. It is not. Um, who could release that data? It could be an, an, anonymized. I'm not suggesting that it, it have identifying uh, information, but who has the authority to release that? Right now, that's one of the uh, objectives of the PAVE action plan uh, data based on uh, even the industry um, you know, came back to us to, to uh, recommend that we make data publicly yeah. available. So, so I think FHFA has the authority to do that. It could release this data, and then you could do what peer review of academic research normally does, is allow lots of people to evaluate the same data so that they can come to the right conclusions. And yet, that's not possible when the data is not available. Let me also... Um, uh, ask you about this. Um, on the issue of undervaluations, Fannie's study of mortgage refinances found, and I quote, the differences observed in undervaluation between white and black borrowers were similar in rate and not meaningfully different. So Fannie concludes that undervaluations don't have any evidence of systemic differences, much less systemic bias. Now, that's for undervaluations. In Fannie's research, they found overvaluations of white-owned homes were more likely to occur in majority black neighborhoods than overvaluation of black-owned homes. And you, you mentioned that in the report, this observation. But the report does not include, I don't think, another uh, observation that the Fannie research comes to, which is, and I quote, the difference in frequency of overvaluations along race may well be due to factors other than racial bias in appraisals, such as gentrification. And there's, there's a clear logic for why gentrification could create a dynamic where you would have this. Um, so it, isn't it, so I guess the question is, how do you come to a conclusion that there's systemic 
systemic bias in appraisals when the two primary sources that you use, first of all, two seems like a pretty low number of studies, and they contradict each other with respect to undervaluations. Thank you for that, um, Ranking Member Toomey. Uh, a couple of things I, I, I would like to just share. So there have been a number of studies released over the last several years on this topic. Uh, and our assessment of all available literature, including from academics, government entities, nonprofits, point to consistent evidence of inequity in home appraisals with black and Latino homeowners more likely to experience misvaluation even after accounting for other factors. Uh, what we know is that the subjectivity and the discretion of the appraisal process and the vast discretion given to appraisers is providing their opinion of value, and it does create a space for other forms of bias. Well, uh, you've restated your conclusion. My point is that the data that you've presented does not meaningfully support that conclusion in my view. There's no doubt there are terrible anecdotes of racial bias in appraisals, but if we're going to upend an industry and have the consequence of raising the cost of home, home ownership for Americans. Let's not kid ourselves. The, these reforms would cost, may, would increase the cost of the appraisal process, and that means homeowners, home buyers, would have to pay that. If we're going to do that, I think it should be based on reliable data. The reports, there are just two. The data is proprietary, so it can't be evaluated by independent academics. In important respects, they contradict each other. Um, and appraisals are an important component of the whole home buying exercise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.